<laughs> I'm armed and ready to go. Line, row markers, drill maker. <sighs> Morning everyone, how are you? Oh, I hope you've all got a bit more energy than me. Oh, go away fly, blue bottle. Uh, yeah, I hope you've got a bit more energy than me. I suddenly feel, oh, I like a bit of a soggy hanky today. It's been a really busy few weeks. Um, I suppose it's inevitable to have one day where I just feel like, oh. However, I don't have time to sit around feeling sorry for myself and twiddling my thumbs and what have you. I need to get sowing some seeds. And actually, you know what? It's kind of a perfect job for a day when my energy is a little bit lower because it's really, really gentle work. Yay. So, today, ah, oh, my thoughts are going to be a bit all over, sorry. Today it's mostly going to be about direct sowing beans, bush types, and a few other bits and bobs. I think ideally I would have liked to have got this done at the beginning of May. Uh, however, you know, at the beginning of May we were getting quite chilly nights. I think it was that first week of May we had a couple of frost nights. So, okay, yeah, I feel a bit behind. But actually with the weather, maybe this is perfect time to do them. So, I'm not worried. I'm going to talk about... Um, a, a couple of the things I'm sewing today but before that I'm going to talk about something I'm not sewing which might seem an odd thing to talk about it's quite rare in fact I don't know that it's ever happened that I change my plan utterly completely with something so late in the season normally towards the end of the season so October November this would be for last year I would already be thinking ahead to this year and thinking you know what has worked well what do I want more of what do I want less of so I'm already planning the following year's garden and then usually sort of around the beginning of January I sit down with my notebook I draw a plan of the garden do my rotations think oh squeeze a few more of those in a few less of those in that sort of thing and of course that plan does change sort of a little bit throughout January, February, even into March. Uh, quite often it will change based on if someone gives me some seeds to try and I think, oh yeah, I really want to try them. Uh, so, like I say, normally I wouldn't change my plan this late in the season, but I have decided there's one whole crop I am not going to grow this year at all. Partly, so it's the flint corn, <laughs> that's my little baggie of seeds. Partly, this should have been sown around about April, beginning of April, in my loo roll holders, I've got my big bag of loo roll holders hanging on the wall there. I'd sow them in April, pop them in the cold frame, sow them in pots, and pop them in the cold frame or you know have them out on the deck they'd be growing away nicely by now they'd be sort of you know six inches 15 centimeters tall and then towards the end of June when my garlic come out they would go in in the place of the garlic so they'd be getting planted out in about five weeks so it's been on the back of my mind for weeks now, like, oh, get the, get the flint corn sown, get the flint corn sown. But, um, you know, this spring didn't go according to plan. I literally missed the entire month of March in the garden, which meant going into April. And I missed quite a bit of April too. So April, I was playing catch up on March. When we get into May, I'm playing catch up on April. And things like the potatoes, the onions, they were my priority to get in. Bed prep, all that kind of stuff. And they just got left and left and left. Um, and like I said, it's been sort of nagging away in the back of my mind. I'd also had a chat at some point with Paul, I can't remember when it was, but, you know, he was saying, is it 
is it a worthwhile crop? Now I love it, I love the look of it in the garden, it's great, tall, beautiful, vivid, bright green fronds, gorgeous. The cats love it to lie under in the summer uh, in the shade. So it's a beautiful plant and yes I use it, sort of a, I, I grind it up and I use it as a flower substitute. But really I only use it for if I'm making sort of like veggie patties or like bubble and squeak type patties to coat it and give it a crunch so it's not really a staple of my diet put it this way if all I had was tomatoes I could make a meal from tomatoes if all I had was flint corn I wouldn't make a meal from it probably so yeah last night I was sort of lying in bed tossing and turning and thinking Am I too late? Is it worth doing them now? Will they come to anything? It's a faff to harvest to get the kernels off. Da, da. And I thought, do you know what, Vivi? Don't bother. Don't bother this year. So instead, I am going to, when the garlic comes out, I'm going to use that as an extra brassica bed. Yay! And that makes so much sense to me because as we get into winter, I'm massively relying on stored produce, so it's a lot of tomatoes, beans, squash, that sort of thing. In the garden, the only fresh stuff is brassicas, carrots, oh please let me get some carrots, no sign yet, and parsnips. So it makes a ton of sense to me to have another bed that I keep going through the winter with some sort of greens, some sort of brassicas in. A, because I like my greens, because my, my diet turns very orange and red <laughs> through winter. So great to have, yeah, some greens, great to have fresh stuff, lovely to have that crunch. So yeah, bye bye flint corn for this year. And it may be, it may be that I don't do it again, ever, or not for a long time. Anyway. I'm chuffed with that decision. The worry about being really, really late with them has now gone. The excitement to have a whole nother bed of brassicas is here. And my brassica seedlings are coming up like mad now. So I'm going to have some spares. Yay, brilliant. So that's what I'm not sowing. What am I sowing? So today I'm going to be sowing one whole bed of my oh, favourite bean in the whole world. Coco de Pampol. Anyone who's been watching for a while will know this is, as far as I'm concerned, this is the queen of beans. If I didn't grow, if I didn't grow anything else in my garden, I'd probably grow Coco de Pampol. They're not something you see in the shops, certainly not over here. They have an incredibly narrow window of harvest of just a couple of weeks. So they're quite the speciality bean and like I said, they're not, they're not easy to buy in the shops. So yeah, grow them. They are gorgeous, brilliant. Now, talking of in the shops and what have you, I'm also going to be growing some of my chickpeas. And something I get asked a lot is, are the chickpeas worth doing? I would say if you want a portion of hummus every week, no, <laughs> you would probably need the whole of my garden times about three to grow enough chickpeas to be having your hummus every week. However, rather like with the cocoa de Pampol, have you ever seen fresh green chickpeas for sale? Ever? I certainly haven't, not in the UK and not on my travels in the Mediterranean and across Europe. The green chickpeas are so unbelievably scrummy. They're worth it for that. So from that little bit of bed I do, you know, it's it's not a crop. I would say from harvest in about September, what I've done over the years is I've brought the harvest early, a, a bit earlier each year, because once they're dry, which is how you would normally kind of think to have them, the mice get there before me so I accidentally discovered the joy of harvesting them green so what I'm trying to say is in terms of amount that when I harvest in September I have September October November December sometimes into January I've got one portion of dried ones left that I've been saving 
So there's enough for me for about four months from that little bird. But that's not making great big bowls of hummus every week. So are they worth doing? I would say yes to enjoy them green, just as a snack and a salad, whatever. Yum, yum, yum. If you want a bowl of hummus every week from your garden, you're not going to get it. So that's chickpeas. The last bean I'm going to do is the rock and core. It's one of only two beans that I grow for the whole pod. Every other bean that I grow is for the bean inside and the pods are discarded to the compost heap, obviously. The rock and core is just a sublime bean. It's a long cylindrical yellow waxy bean from France, as you can imagine from the name. They are quite quick to produce and fairly prolific. So I'm going to be sowing these in succession. I'm going to sow two rows today and then I'll wait three or four weeks and sow another two rows. They're, they're such a Oh, they've got a lovely bite. I'll steam them for sort of three minutes or so. That kind of warms them through, but they still keep their bite and that gorgeous waxiness. And they're lovely in a potato salad. Oh, I can see a friend walking towards my shed. Hang on a tick. Oh, what a great interruption. One of my neighbours. <laughs> How lovely. They're all starting to chuck up scapes. So she's, uh, she's going to have the lot out. She's, she's going away for a while. So she's decided to have the lot out today so they don't all, you know, go to ruin. And uh, she's just walking around now delivering handfuls of her leeks to everyone. How lovely. Yum, yum, yum. Right. Um, let's, let's, I need to get on actually because we are due, it's beautifully sunny at the moment, but we are due rain again soon. Hey buddy, there's not much room in here for you this morning. Um, so the other things uh, today, some fennel. Yay. Got loads of packs. Oh, I've got two different ones. I've got Perfection and Fino. Fino. Hey, buddy. Am I going to sew a cat today? And then, excuse cat tail. And then a few beetroot. I'm not going to do as many beetroot this year because I find I'm, I don't know, I'm, I'm eating less and less of them. I like them occasionally, so I will do a couple. And then some spinach. And in the bed where I'm going to have beetroot, spinach, I'll also have chard, which I would normally direct sow. Um, but as you saw from the other day, I've got that tray, that modular tray on the deck with loads of them coming up. I think I'm going to be giving away chard. So just those in that bed. And I need to remember to leave space at the end of the bed for my du long de Londe peppers that I'm going to plant in a block. Oh, and... At the end of the... Oh, sorry, buddy. I want to stroke him. I've just knocked him on the conch. At the end of the bed where I'm going to do the rock and court and chickpeas, I'm going to leave a little gap on the end to plant my Cove Tronchuda cutting from Paul, also known as Portuguese cabbage and Portuguese... and or Portuguese kale. Right, I really think it's time to get on. I'm concerned about uh, running out of time today because there's a lot to sow. Ideally today as well, if I do it, it'll be in a separate video because it'll be too much otherwise. I'd like to get all my climbing beans started, but they'll need to be started in pots because I haven't sorted their beds for them yet. Oh, I definitely do feel behind. However, I'm not too worried because I think I can catch up. Let's go do some sewing. The principles for all my sewings today are pretty much the same. Well, with the beans, the bush beans and the chickpeas. Because these beds aren't going to be just one crop in each, the first thing I've done is I've just kind of put little bits of um, wooden posts in to tell me how far to go with each crop. I kind of like doing that initially. I can just have a visual and imagine how much crop will be in there and just over the years I get used to the size and, and what I need. Next thing is to put my lines in. 
I am a neat freak. I do like my straight lines, but also, oh, excuse me. It just helps when, initially when things are coming up, of being able to tell what is a weed and what is actually something I want to grow. I think that's especially useful if it's the first time you've grown something and you may not know what the seed uh, leaf looks like. leaving a little bit of space at the top of this bed for Paul's Cove Tronchuda. I put all my lines in, but as I mentioned, I'm only going to do two rows of the rocking core initially, and then I'll do another sowing in two, three, four weeks. So I'm making my, oh, no, I'll tuck you in. I'm making my rows about 25 centimeters apart. The books, the packets, they'll all say 30 centimetres, but I'm greedy. So 25 centimetres between my rows, and then when I actually come to sew, I'll do my droppings of seeds about 25 centimetres apart within the row. 25 and 25 instead of 30 and 30. I only have three row makers. I need to make a fourth for myself. That's half a row because it's chickpeas. Also, because we've had all this rain, I can see very clearly on the top of all my beds where I've got really big stones or glass. So I've got my metal bucket with me to chuck them in. Okay, let's get up close and personal. In the past I used to um, dib out an individual hole, dib a hole drop the seed in, dib a hole, drop the seed in. Oh, another stone. But actually, making a drill is much quicker and easier. It's going to be about oh, a couple of inches deep. Oh, it was wobbly already. It's because the soil is so soft. I can't get any tension on my look row markers. Let's see if that'll do it. And of course, the fantabulous thing today is I'm sowing into moist soil. Fantastic. And also, not just that it's moist, but it's soft enough to make, you know, quite nice drills. And occasionally, you know, a lump will be thrown up like that, but just because it's also moist, I can just crumble them now instead of feeling like I'm holding rocks. Okay, so this is for the rock and core. Gloves off to handle the seeds. <laughs> These gloves are great. They are, they're, they're such a lovely close fit. And I do feel fairly nimble and dexterous in them, but not quite enough for seed sowing. So like I said, you know, whoops, I should drop one. Sort of, whoops, there's three there. Every sort of 20, oh, I'm doing more like 20 centimeters. If a couple come up too closely together, oh dear, <laughs> been a bit cat handed today. Yeah, if if a couple come up too cl too closely together, I'll simply nip or cut off 
the weaker looking of the two that come up closely together and quickly back on with the gloves and it is as simple as just pinch the soil back over the row so once I've done all my sewing I will put the nets back over the net tunnels like I said I don't particularly like seeing net tunnels everywhere I want to see my plants but just for now while this bed is sort of fluffed up and bare it's just too much of a temptation for the um, cats and foxes just a little light firm down just so that they've got good contact with the soil above below around them okay good and I will do exactly the same with the chickpeas both in terms of the drill the distancing etc etc so I'd better get on hadn't I Just thought of another question I'm often asked. Oh, stone. Do I pre-soak the chickpeas or any of my beans? Simple answer, no. I've tried both ways. Didn't seem to make any difference. Apart from pre-soaked seeds are a little bit harder to handle. Make life easy for yourself. And now for this uh, lovely Gove Tranjuda from Paul, a cutting from one of his plants last year. Oh, it's got some nice little roots going on there. There you go, welcome to your new home. Maybe a bit deeper. I've actually got, oopla, I've got two of these cuttings from Paul, so I think I'll put the other one, it's in a big pot for now, but I'll put the other one in what would have been the flint corn bed. Yay. Now, every time the sun comes out, oh, get that grass out. Every time the sun comes out, it feels so beautifully warm. It's incredibly humid today. And... When the sun goes in and the wind picks up, it really feels like that rain is on its way. It's not supposed to be here for another two hours. I think it may come before then. So yeah, time to get a wriggle on. Be happy, little one. Oh, it feels like that rain is coming. Quick sticks. Rusty, is the rain coming? So, this is spinach. Liberally sown. And as always, if I need to thin, by way of thinning, I'll just pull them out as little babies, scoff them in a salad. Oh, that was very liberal. Oh, Vivi, watch what you're doing. Okay, good. Oh, I can't be bothered. Gloves on and off. Come on, let's just get on. I need to get this done before the rain. Yes, good, good, good. Getting there, 
getting there, getting there. Wow, it's getting really humid out there. Oh, I've definitely got my glow on today. Right, I've got the cocoa de pan pole to do. Crack on with that in a second because it's getting closer and closer. I know that rain is, it's well on the way. I think um, I'm just gonna wipe my face with my dirty hands and my leaving dirty streaks on my face. Gotta go to the post office in a minute, don't care. Um, the climbing beans, yeah, I'm going to do them in pots tomorrow. I might do a few direct. I haven't got my poles up yet, but I might do some direct and just put little... I've got these little coffee stirrers. I've got a load of these that... Uh, these must be from year before last because no one's been into work, but Catherine put a pot next to the coffee making facilities at work to say, please put your used stirrers in here. Gave them a bit of a wash. Boom. So yeah, direct sown climbing beans in the beds that are ready. The beds that aren't, do them in pots. I think I've got about a week and a bit of digging left. Yay! Um, one thing I wanted to say, I've got the packet in my hand to remind me to say it with the fennel. So last year, I think in the end I ended up doing three sowings. <laughs> That's not three, Vivi. Three. I did the girl guide sewings because the first two lots were massacred by the slugs. They're right on the edge of the garden uh, next to where my neighbour has, let's just say a wild garden. <laughs> um, and literally on a rainy evening, if I come down here, I just see all the snails coming out of his lush undergrowth. So the reason I'm mentioning this is because the sec the third sewing, I beg your pardon, I think it was the third sewing, I did it, it was sometime in July, I can't remember exactly when, but the point is, I did it after the longest day. Now there's a bit of a sort of a myth, sort of garden law, old wives tale, whatever you want to call it, 
that things like fennel and spinach, um, which can be really tricky to get them to fruition without them bolting, apparently they are less likely to bolt if sown after the longest day, which is, when is that, 21st of June, something like that? It's not far away, is it? Crikey, this year, where is it going? So, I've sown two rows now, and then I've left space for two more rows, which I will sow after the longest day. I've sown all my spinach, but I might also do a row of spinach after the longest day. And we can see, you know, I might not be able to... Is that a wasp or a bee? That's a wasp. Um, I might not get definitive proof of either or theory, uh, but it's always worth having a go, isn't it? A little worth having a go. Because last year, sorry, the main point was, last year when I did that third, whatever, sowing of fennel, they came to fruition, well, the ones that came to fruition, um, they lasted right through the winter, they didn't bolt, they were great. They would have lasted even longer, except we then had that hard frost and snow in February, which just did for them. Uh, they could obviously tolerate a bit of cold, but not that kind of deep frost and the snow. So yeah, I'll do another couple of rows in just over a month's time. Good. I'm really glad to get that most of that sewing done today. Like I said, I'll do the cocoa de pampol in a second. There's just that, and I'm sure all of you who've ever grown veggies feel this too. There's that deep, deep sense of relief and boy oh boy I'm going to sleep better tonight when we know we've got the seeding done. Because you know what, if we don't plant seeds, we ain't going to have a garden. It really is as simple as that. If you don't put seeds in, you're not going to get anything out. So, as I mentioned right at the top of this vid, yeah, I do feel behind still. I'm kind of about the same as I was last year when I felt behind. And of course, this year, my plan was to spend March and April getting the whole garden ready so that, boom, first week of May, all the beds would be ready and I would be sewing, all my structures would be up. Best laid plans and all that. Never mind. It's happening now and I'm really happy and relieved. So I'm going to shut up. I've got to get back out there before this rain chucks down. You know, I don't mind gardening in a bit of drizzle, but pelting rain that goes on for hours and hours and hours, no thank you very much. So I'm going to say cheerio to you all for now. I'm just trying to think when I'm going to see you again and what I'm going to be up to right now. <laughs> I've got no idea. No, I really don't know what I'm doing next. I need a list. I've got a list at home. The only list I've got with me today is my sewing list. I'll see you soon. Until then, please look after yourselves. Look after each other. Look after your gardens. Look after the wildlife. Take some time out to just sit and enjoy it all too. Bye for now, lovelies.